Hello and welcome back. Today's video is about lossless scaling, a universal frame generator designed to work with almost any GPU. And today I'm gonna to show you how to double, triple, or even quadruple your frame rates in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'm the first person to bring lossless scaling to the Flight Sim community here on YouTube. And as a channel with over 2 million views, I will show you what lossless scaling is, how it works, how to get the most out of it, and what the common mistakes are that people make. So let's get started. So what is lossless scaling? Lossless scaling is a universal frame generator that can be used for most anything. It's designed from the ground up using machine learning to run on a wide range of GPUs. You can use this on NVIDIA GPUs, you can use it on AMD, you can even use it on integrated graphics cards like Intel. You can use it on GTX, RTX, all manner of different cards. Now lossless scaling, 2.1 introduced three times frame generation mode. Times three mode does increase your GPU load by approximately 1.7 times compared to times two mode. However, this is a good thing because in Microsoft Flight Simulator, we're generally CPU limited, not GPU limited. So the fact that lossless scaling increases our GPU load is good because we have extra GPU capacity. Now for the best experience in times three mode, it is recommended to lock the game frame rate at one third of your monitor's refresh rate and then turn on times three mode. And we'll talk about this again soon. Now, early on in August, they introduced an update reducing frame generation artifacts on pattern textures in the sim. So less artifacting is what that means. And now we get to what we wanted to talk about today, which is loss of scaling frame generation version 2.3. This introduces a times four frame generation mode. The recommendation for the base frame rate in order to use this is 60 frames per second, and you should be using a monitor with a pretty high refresh rate of at least 240 and above. It can be used with lower frame rates, but generally speaking for times four, you want a very high refresh monitor and a stable 60 frames per second. You do have to purchase it from Steam, and in order to do that, you have to install the Steam app and create an account. Once you've installed Steam and purchased the app, you'll see this. Now over here, you'll see a launch button, and that launches the program, but you can also launch the program outside of Steam. You come here and click on this gear symbol, Come down here to manage and then click on add desktop shortcut. This will allow you to launch the program outside of Steam without Steam running. So here's the program, loss of scaling 2.11. First things first, on the left, you're gonna see game profiles. As you can see, I've got one for Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you use other games, you can use this for all of those as well. So loss of scaling was originally a program used to scale and so it has this scaling mode and scaling type. We don't wanna use those for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So you leave those the way they are default. This is what we're interested in over here is loss of scaling frame generation. Now there's a couple different options to choose from. You can use the original version, which is loss of scaling frame generation 1.1, or you can use 2.3, which is the latest version. You can select here from the dropdown what you want times two, times three, times four. Now here is performance mode. Now what performance mode is, it gives you better performance, but slightly worse quality. It's intended for lower end GPUs. So if you've got, let's say a GTX 1080, GTX 1070, you might wanna try using performance mode. But ideally you would wanna have performance mode off. Next we have the cursor settings. And the one that we're really interested in is the scale cursor selection. And you wanna have that on. And what that does, it applies the program settings to your cursor as well. What happens is a lot of people have realized that when they're using lossless scaling, their cursor doesn't work very well. This scales the cursor along with the program so that you don't get any cursor lag and your cursor is gonna work. Next we have sync mode, which is the built-in V-Sync in lossless scaling. The general agreement among people who are using this program is, is the best way to limit your frame rates is to leave sync mode to default in lossless scaling, to not have V-Sync enabled in the game, and then to turn it on using some sort of external program, either Reva Tuner 
or in my case, NVIDIA control panel. This is the max frame latency setting we talked about earlier. Three is the recommended value for AMD GPUs. One is the recommended value for NVIDIA GPUs. This is HDR. If you have an HDR monitor, you can turn HDR support on. This is G-Sync support. This is one of the new features of this latest version. If you have a G-Sync monitor, you can turn on G-Sync support. One thing with this program is that external overlays can cause problems. Anything you're using to display an FPS, for example. It's best not to use those. What you should do if you wanna see the FPS is turn on this draw FPS option, and that will show you an FPS indication on screen. Capture modes, capture the, the best one to use is DXGI. Here is where you can select your GPU if you have multiple GPUs. Output display, I only have one, out, I only have one monitor, so output display, I just leave it on auto. Down here, you do have multi-monitor mode if you have more than one monitor. So again, what you want basically for your settings, is you want scaling mode on auto, you want scaling type on off. Pick your frame generation. Version 2.3 is the one you're gonna want. For lower performing systems, you're gonna want times two mode. If you have a really high performing system and a really high refresh rate monitor, you can try times four mode. Also remember for lower end systems to try using performance mode. You may experience some more lag using performance mode. Ideally, you'd rather not have to. You wanna scale your cursor for NVIDIA GPUs, select one for max frame rate latency, select three for AMD, draw FPS on or off, whichever you want. Remember how we spoke earlier that this was originally a scaling program. So we're not using the scaling part of the program. However, to turn on and turn off frame generation, we have to hit the scale button. So you click the scale button and it takes five seconds, you'll see the countdown, and then it goes from the regular output of your monitor to the loss of scaling frame generation. Now I don't have a game running right now. The reason is the way loss of scaling works is it simply takes whatever is on your screen and then either doubles, triples, or quadruples the frame rate. When you record with it, it doesn't record at that higher frame rate. So even if I had Microsoft Flight Simulator open and turned loss of scaling on, you wouldn't see the difference, so there's no point in doing it. One last setting we wanna look at, click here on settings, the scale hotkey. So this is a hotkey you can set to turn loss of scaling on and off. By default, it's control S. And so what that means is if you're in a game, you have lossless scaling open, just click control S and it's going to scale it and click control S again and it will unscale it. One thing you wanna do in NVIDIA control panel is add the lossless scaling program. Just click add, add the program. And then in the program settings, come down here to Vulkan OpenGL present method. Click on the drop down and select prefer layered on DXGI swap chain. And then click apply. The basic setup is pretty simple. Come into NVIDIA control panel. In the global settings, set your max frame rate to your monitor refresh rate, which in my case is 60 FPS. In the individual program settings, you want to select Microsoft Flight Simulator and then set your max frame rate in the program setting to half your monitor refresh rate. So in my case, that would be 30. Then you click apply. Then you come here into your general options in Microsoft Flight Simulator. You wanna turn VSync off and then you're good to go. So that's it for the latest update. If you have any questions, click on the video that's on the screen now that will answer most of the common questions that people have. Otherwise, if you like the video, please like and subscribe. And I would love to hear your comments below, what you think, what your experiences are. But please let me know, and I wish everybody a great day.